Okay, welcome on this new webinar by iVolatility.com. Um, we're going to talk today about how we can use the IVX, which is a measure that we created about 20 years ago, to allow us to sort of estimate the fair expectation of the market for volatility, how we can use the IVX as a way to sort of predict intraday spot movements. So obviously there is no you know, magic formula. This is not the holy grail, which is going to tell us exactly how to uh, make money in the market without taking any risk. It's, it's one of many indicators that you may want to use in order to sort of improve you know, your uh, approach and when you trade to understand things a bit better. So without further ado, let's get started and talk about what is the IVX. So it's a proprietary measure that was created by the team about yeah sort of 10 20 years ago it's a, a sort of like a trademark that that we that we that we created and and the idea was very uh, very simple you know the idea was to say um, we want to be able to estimate, to understand um, what the market is sort of pricing in as a measure for future volatility over a specific period. So, you know, we can obviously look at volatility on different metrics. We can look at historical volatility, which is going to tell us how things have been sort of happening in the past. But we can also look at what the market is implying by looking at option prices. And from various option prices, we're able to extract a measure of volatility. And we're able to extract this measure across all stocks, all sectors segments of the market, so stocks, indices, and ETFs. And so the AVX is this resulting um, sort of like index that we created, and that is available both on the data side, so if you're interested to purchase IVX data in order to perform backtests or create signals, this is something that can be done. It's also available within the IVO Live platform, the analytics platform that we offer with price starting at $20 uh, a month. And, and you may want to sort of have a look at this as a a measure of what the market is expecting volatility to be. So the way it works is very simple. You know, we use options mostly around the money, um, but we use various options, but mostly around the money, and we sort of have a special special way of, of weighing those options that will allow us to construct an index that will track implied volatility. And in this first slide, what I want to show you is that um, the IVX index is a very strong predictor of future volatility, future realized volatility. So if you want, you know, if you take the IVX level today and you sort of like compare it with, you know, in 20 days with the realized volatility over that same period that we sort of were forecasting for, you will find that, you know, more than 50% of the total variance of sort of the realized volatility was explained by the AVX. So the AVX sort of has a strong uh, capacity to predict um, the, the, the future level of volatility. And those two charts, you know, we, you can see uh, top right is on the S&P, bottom right uh, is on the Microsoft. So it works both at the index level and at the spot level. So the way, you know, you can read those charts is very simple. You know, the x-axis shows you uh, the level of, um, of, the, of the IVX and the, the y-axis shows you the realized volatility for that same period. So if I'm looking at the IVX 30, which is going to produce sort of an expectation of where volatility is going to be for the next 30 days. If I go in 30 days and I look at the volatility for the past 30 days um, and I compare that 30 day volatility, which in essence is going to be a 20 day realized volatility because, you know, over 30 days, there is about 20 day trade, 20 trading sessions. So if I compare that 30 day forecast against the 20 day realized, right, I can then have a point where I have on the x-axis, the implied vol, on the y-axis, the realized vol. And by looking at those, I can then sort of fit like a curve, which is going to tell me, um, at least show me, to what degree, you know, uh, the implied volatility and the realized volatility are, are linked. And obviously, we can see that although there is a lot of sort of dispersion within, you know, uh, against the red lines, uh, we can see there are multiple points which are below, multiple points which are above. We can see that the general trend is, is pretty true. The higher the IVX goes, the higher the real, realized volatility goes. And that is very important and interesting because it sort of tells us that, you know, the IVX has a capacity to predict um, future volatility, future realized volatility. And we can see the same picture on um, on Microsoft at the bottom right. So we can see that when the IVX is predicting a higher, more elevated volatility, in general, we get a higher and more elevated realized volatility. Now, again, it's not one for one. It's not exact science. It's not you know, uh, a prediction that is 100% correct, but it gives some strong indication. Um, one thing that we want to sort of understand is, um, and that is going to be the basis of 
the way we're going to use the IVX on, as an intraday signal. We want to understand how spot and volatility are correlated. So first we look at the top right at the S&P, uh, implied vol, IVX index against, so impl IVX for implied vol index against the spot. So if we look at spot against IVX, we can see that there is a correlation, but that correlation is pretty weak. Like there isn't, you know, we can't really say that over a long period of time, there is a very strong relationship. So there is a relationship, you know, volatility tends to be slightly higher as spot um, goes down, but, you know, it's not a very sort of strong relationships on a sort of medium to long term time frame. So for example, here we're looking at, you know, about 14 years of information. Over the last 14 years, it's difficult to say that there is a very strong relationship between both. At the bottom right chart, we have two other sort of like subplots that, that we can look at. The first one is the blue dots shows the spot in X axis against the implied volatility index and for 30 days. And we can see that on the blue, which is uh, since 2020, so over the last sort of two years, well, we can see that um, the correlation and sort of like the uh, covariance of, of those things, so the, the, the way those things evolve together is, is again, it exists, but it's not very strong. It doesn't give a huge signal. So using the IVX as a way to predict, you know, what might happen on longer time frame, is not a very good idea because, you know, statistically, historically, it doesn't really yield much benefit. But if you look at the orange line, which is, you know, the last 30 days, right? So if we look at the last 30 days and we look at the orange line and we plot um, uh, S&P level against the IVX, we can see that the very much, um, that the, co the correlation and sort of like the, the way um, both spot and implied vol behave is very, very closely related. And we can see that the um, sort of like the two basically work together and they're very strongly correlated. So this is quite interesting because it tells us that on longer time frame, volatility is not a very good, um, it doesn't have a very strong relationship with spot, but it also tells us that on much shorter time frame, like last 30 days, last 15 days, we're going to see a very strong Uh, relationship most of the time. And that is quite interesting um, to observe. And this is something that allows us to then go sub daily. So to go intraday and to study the way the implied vol index and the spot are behaving on an intraday basis. And that is going to be a very uh, strong, you know, base for building on this um, at, and using the IVX as a signal. Now, um, I want to spend a minute on why implied volatility matters, because generally people sort of oppose, you know, and I've seen that multiple occasions, you know, people oppose implied vol options and, and spot. And it's all, in my opinion, part of the same thing. You know, they're all part of the same equation. Like an option is a way to express a directional view in as much as, you know, a future would be or a stock would be. And so it allows you to sort of have, a, you know, there is a very strong relationship that mechanically exists between spot and volatility. You know, and so you cannot just ignore volatility because, you know, people trading volatility, people trading options will have an impact on spot as well. And so you can't just ignore volatility, but you need to understand what people are doing in that space as well. Because it's like, otherwise, it's like if you're driving on the road and you're completely deciding to ignore all the trucks, you just want to focus on cars to make your decisions. It's not going to work. Like sometimes, you know, you're going to hit a truck when you're going to change lane because you didn't pay attention to the fact that trucks exist. And in this case, it's to me, it's the same, you know, sometimes, you know, you may sort of hit a hard place when you're ignoring volatility and the signals volatility is giving you. Now, implied volatility is often described as the market's collective guess of where future volatility will be. But it's also the cost of the risk associated with certain strikes. That's why each strike carries a different volatility level. And if you look into IVO Live, you will see the chart that we call the strikes queue, which basically shows you the implied volatility level depending on the different strikes that exist. Every second, right, every time something happens, market makers, which are specialized in options, for example, will reevaluate the likelihood of all possible scenarios, and they will modify the volatility of each scenario accordingly. So it's, it's a constant process where every single second, you know, sort of like uh, market makers will change the price slightly, you know, a few cents, you know, a few tenths of a cents, but it's, it, they're going to change the price 
every few seconds depending on what the market does so market goes down four five six points on the s p they're going to start repricing the possibility of the market having a sharp move down and you're not going to necessarily see it immediately uh, you, you'll have to be very much focused as a market maker if you were a market maker or if you've worked as a market maker you would know that you know those things would mechanically happen if you're just trading options buying puts selling calls trading com combos etc et you're not necessarily going to see that directly but this is what happens you know every time the market's doing something goes down five points people start to increase the probability of a very large move happening and so as such you know some of the options are are, are going to be um, repriced accordingly and some of the volatilities are going to be repriced accordingly and that sort of like the evaluation that market makers are making this is what we want to look at because if we can identify what this evaluation is telling us the forecast that they're making it gives us a probability environment, a sort of like almost a statistical and a mathematical environment where we can just say, well, the probability that they're assigning to a big crash is increasing or it's decreasing. And that will infer and help us have educated decisions and guesses on what spot might do later on. Now, one thing I want you to consider is the fact that volatility, you know, the level implied around the money is only true locally. So when you look at volatility, when you look at any, you know, strike volatility, it's only avail available or right, correct around that strike. And as soon as, you know, we start to move away from the strike, the market will price a new scenario. So the argument is at the core of the IV and spot divergence trading approach. Now, it's important to know that volatility will react much faster than, than spot in most occasions. Um, and there are various, you know, ways to explain that. And oh, obviously, those arguments are not definitive. They're not, you know, it's difficult to, you can't really necessarily convince people because you would have to do like a full-on backtest and make sure that you have a predictory power in, in the IVX. But in general, what you will observe and, and what I have observed is, is the fact that volatility tends to be slightly faster because, again, you know, volatility sort of it has a level of prediction about what might happen in the future and so as such it must be a bit faster than what spot is doing you know spot can be imbalanced by someone you know trading things over the day and obviously you know there could be you know big buyers that step in because spot price is too cheap but most of the time when you have a huge or sell order on 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 a stock you know that sell order will sort of like dwarf everything for that specific day well in volatility it's very different because in volatility first of all you can trade via leverage products which means you know the large dislocations that might happen in the market can be very quickly very quickly repriced. Like if you go in the market and you know people start selling implied vol on the S&P at six, very quickly vol is going to get paid. Very, very quickly. Because uh, people just have to spend premium to get exposure to that volatility and they can spend a lot of premium because options are highly leveraged products. You know, you can get easily 10, 20, even 50 times leverage on some options depending on the level of volatility. So as such, it will allow you to quickly reprice things. The second argument is the fact that volatility products are less liquid than the underlying asset. Um, and so as such, again, you know, market makers will be very quick to reprice because they don't want to get caught into a bad position. So as soon as they spot that someone is doing something, they will sort of adjust slowly, but they will adjust. And because the liquidity is less, you know, it will be, it will result in much faster pricing um, in the spot market where well, generally you have natural people who are selling and natural people who are buying you have people you know the vast majority of the trades that happen um, they happen between you know people who are long and selling out and people who are, sh are short or at least people who are flat and buying into a position and so you have a natural sort of like exchange uh, of trades with options the most likely outcome is that you know you're going to trade against the market maker and so they're going to create liquidity for you they're going to create that product for you so every time you know you trade sometimes you might be buying an option against a natural seller but it's very unlikely and the vast majority of times you will trade against someone who's creating that sort of opposite exposure to you which isn't necessarily the case with spot and in the vast majority of cases it doesn't happen like that on spot vast majority of cases you're trading against a natural seller or you're trading against a natural buyer and so the liquidity in sort of like the underlying asset will be much tighter if you take the e-minis for example in the S&P you'll see that the you know the bid ask credit is around 20 25 cents uh, and that represents about half a basis points of bid ask spread which is very very tight if you look in the option market you'll find that most options are going to be trading with a 15 to 25 basis point spread in volatility and that 15 to 25 basis points against the vol level of, let's say, 20 vol represents about one and a quarter percent. So you've got half a basis point of bid ask spread against one and a quarter percent.
you know and so as such that you know m shows you that our options are much less liquid if you just look at the bid ask spread in in price for options you know it won't be it will be quite frequent that options on the s p will be trading you know between 50 cents and a point on something that's worth you know 80 to 100 dollars a piece and so as such you know the bid ask spread is going to be far far greater on those options than it will be on the underlying asset again you know they're less liquid as a whole so I'm not talking about, you know, notional trade deed. I'm not talking about overall volume because obviously, you know, option volume can be significant when you add all, all those strikes. But on any specific maturity and strike, the volume isn't that great. You know, most of the time the volume isn't that great. You should maybe trade a couple of billions of dollars on some strikes and, and, and that's pretty much it. You know, whereas, you know, if you look at the S&P futures, they'll trade easily more than 200 billion a day. So again, you know, one product, when you compare one e option symbol against, you know, an underlying symbol, you'll find that the liquidity of the option symbol specifically is much, much lower. And also you have far less players which are involved in the volatility space compared to the spot market, which means, you know, imbalances can sometimes take a while to uh, get cleared up. So, you know, you, that will again, you know, trigger a much faster uh, repricing because there will be less people who will be willing to take the opposite side. So that's quite an interesting observation, I think, to make. Okay. So let's get into the actual, you know, sort of strategy and the way we, we look into this. So the first thing is, you know, we understand um, from the first chart I, sh I showed you, or one of the very first chart I showed you, that whenever spot goes down, volatility generally goes up, right? So, so let's make, I mean, if we go back to this, you know, graph here, and we look at the orange line here, we can see that as spot is moving down, volatility is moving up. And we can see that this relationship is pretty strong, um, you know, is pretty strong on short time frames. We also know that, you know, we can use a relative logic on short time frames because that relationship holds pretty well. So we know that, you know, whenever we, we so what I call a relative logic is, is, is basically sort of like using an anchoring point. So for example, if volatility was 27 of the open and the NASDAQ was at 14,500 uh, and NASDAQ now uh, two hours later is trading at 14,500 100 and volatility is 23 we know volatility has gone down four points and spot hasn't moved so we know that you know there is something that is happening in the vol market and using that anchor point can be very very insightful the idea is to try and identify points during the trading session when the volatility market and the spot are in disagreement so they're diverging those points may give us a tactical trade signal to either enter a long short position in volatility or a long short position in spot or even a sort of like uh, a convergence trade where we would be for example long uh, in the volatility long volatility long spot or short spot and uh, short volatility so we could sort of put express those views in different ways it could either be by having a long position in vol because we want to play vol it could be by having a long position in spot it could be by having a short spot position it could be by you know having a sort of conversion trade um by by trading both and and we'll see how we can express those but you know again i think the idea here isn't so much about you know what kind of trades you want to put on but just trying to sort of start to look into those specific divergences so um, let's go on sort of like sub daily time frame. So everything you're going to see here is being built by using our uh, intraday data. So we use one minute snapshots and every minute we recalculate the IVX for the entire market. So we recalculate the IVX as well as, you know, all the um, sort of option Greeks and everything. Uh, and, and we can use this data. Um, you know, either we, you can purchase this data and get it from us and, and then do your own test on your end and we can provide you API solutions where you would get sort of like a live streaming feed from this data or, you know, you can also use the analytic solution we provide and in Ivo Live you will see uh, one minute snapshots that will be displayed. So what we're seeing here is first for the 2nd of February of 2022, um, we've got top charts, right? We've got the spot and IVX correlation. So we can see that, you know, for that specific day, the correlation between, you know, the spot level and the IVX was extremely strong. It was extremely strong. But if we look at the second chart, we can also see that there are multiple periods intraday where spot and implied vol diverge. So one of the ways to represent this is to say, um, I'm going to plot vol, in, I'm going to plot spot, sorry, um, in this chart in blue, right? So ch the, the, the second chart is, it basically shows uh, in blue the spot price of the S&P. Uh, and in red, I am inferring a spot level from the observed 
um, from the observed volatility level. So from that volatility and spot correlation, you know, I can say that, you know, for example, when volatility is 17, then the S&P should be no, uh, 45.85. And so I'm going to plot all those points for that specific days. Now, we can see that both are very, very strongly correlated. They, they pretty much describe the same thing. But on multiple occasions, you know, early on in the day, and I've put some, some arrows to sort of identify those points, on multiple occasions, there are divergences. We can see that spot jumps up. IV doesn't give the same signal. So, for example, if we look on sort of like around 2 p.m., we can see that, you know, the spot level implied by, by volatility is very steady. But we have a, you know, we have a jump of four or five points on the, on the spot level. That can give a very short-term signal. So, obviously, it all depends on what you're trying to achieve. This is not a strategy or this is probably not enough as a strategy to work on its own. And it's probably something that you want to add to your existing view. But if you're looking for an intraday sell signal, you may probably want to sell rather at this point when spot is exceeding the sort of level implied by volatility rather than set at this point where sort of like spot is being seen as too cheap relative to volatility. And we can see that this is relatively sticky across multiple days. If we look at the 3rd of February 2022, we can see that, you know, again, here we have a very strongly correlated day. We even have almost no dispersion for a big part of the day, like pretty much between 4490 and 4500, extremely correlated. So intraday traders may use those as confirmation signals. Now, you'll find that it doesn't work every day. It doesn't work uh, every every week, sometimes you know, for a few days, it's just it's just not going to work, or it's going to give you very low quality signals. So you know, you'll have to learn um, how to recognize, you know, those signals. So for example, if we zoom in on the third of, of February, which was the day we saw here, very efficient day outside of a few, you know, very 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 few periods. But we can see that you know this was a very efficient session. There isn't that much that we could have done, right? There is a little bit of an excess here, but that excess is like a few points, so it's probably not worth trading this. So this is a very efficient trading session in the S&P where, you know, the blue line shows the spot price, the red line shows the spot price as implied by the IVX. We can see that here, the correlation between the two is extremely strong and they both pretty much describe the same thing. There isn't much to do here, to be frank. But on some other occasions, especially when, you know, the activity in both option market and spot market is huge, we can see very large dislocations. If you take the 3rd of February 2022 for Amazon, which was a day before the earnings of the company, well, we can see that on that day, there was a lot of, of movements that happened and that, yes, you know, the global sort of like the global spot and IV relationship was generally presented but we can see that there were loads of dislocation. You know, for example, for this vol level around 53, we traded down to 70 and back up to sort of 2800, right? So we traded in a percent and a half wide range where, you know, the IV almost didn't, almost didn't react at all, right? We would ex have expected vol to go up as spot was going lower, but it wasn't the case. And and so this sort of like tells us that there is a big battle happening in, in, in volatility at this level, you know, either people accumulating or, you know, sort of selling uh, volatility depending on what's happening. But vol is much less sort of like reactive in these events. And that's when it can provide us with interesting entry levels for, you know, volatility stream. We're going to also see that for that specific day, 3rd of Feb, it was a huge trading session in spot, but also in volatility. We can see that the lowest sort of volatility points probably around 42. The highest is probably around 54. So it's about 12 volts of, 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 of sort of like vol change, which is, which is not a small move either. So how to trade it? I mean, obviously this is not an investment recommendation, but it, it's just a way to sort of, again, you know, educate you. And, and this is purely educational, but this is just a way for you to start, to start thinking about, you know, spot and vol. And even if you're just trading spot, even if you just trade, you know, stocks that are in play, that gap up, this sort of like logic is going to be very powerful in helping you understand, you know, what is happening and framing things in context. So whenever you spot a dislocation, there may be a number of trades that you could uh, make. For example, if we look on the right, we are looking at Tesla. Those views are from the charts service within Ivo Live. So it allows you to chart intraday, right? It's mostly used for intraday charting. It, it allows you to chart intraday the implied vol level. You can also look at um, spot level. We can look at uh, realized volatility and we can obviously look 
um, at implied vol um, on the surface. So if you want to see, you know, the volatility intraday of the 50% put on the S&P expiring in two years, then you're able to track this. And, and so uh, we can give you more information on this, but there are loads of charts that you can see and all of them intraday so to provide you some signals. So when you spot those dislocation, you know, you want to you know you want to dig into those and understand what's happening so in this example we're looking at the tesla chart and we see that during the first hour of trading right the ivx which is the bottom chart was coming off so the ivx is coming off and you know spot well uh, let's say in the first hour of trading you know ivx is sort of like as this downtrend and spot first as an up move but then sort of consolidates and starts to go back down a bit so we have this sort of like divergence where well it's basically a convergence but which shows a divergence if you want in the sense that spot goes down and vol goes down at the same time this is not normal spot goes down vol should go up or you know if vol is going down then spot should be going up so the fact that spot is going down and vol is going down shows that there is a dislocation you know, either spot should be going up and volatility down, or volatility should be going up and spot down. But both going down without a known reason is generally unusual. You know, now from there, you know, do you buy volatility and see wh where it goes? Do you buy shares? Do you buy both? That will obviously depend on your view. It will depend on what you think of this light. It will depend on what you want to play. It will depend on the fact that you can explain or not whatever is happening. But again, you know, using this, let's say you want to buy calls and you're interested in buying calls. Well, that's providing you. That divergence here is providing you with a an interesting signal, at least, you know, as an interesting sort of execution signal to get into position. And so, you know, if you maybe you wait until that divergence sort of so, sorts of resolves. And so we can see that around, you know, sort of like 1010, which is, you know, it's all in, in, in European time. But if you look around 1010 Eastern time, you know, we can see that spot finally sort of gives up and volatility starts to move back up. That could be seen as a good entry point that might give you a much better entry point than you know buying at any point in time you know or sort of like buying randomly when you see uh, the spot going up you know it's much better to sort of enter from a position of strength where you know volatility is, is going down and you know spots going down then you know uh, buy into sort of like into strength and sometimes you know it can be uh, you can pay up a lot where because you know you're seeing huge buyers of all at the same time as you are or a huge buyer of spot at the same time as you are so you know sort of like getting into a position with the right entry level is generally like 50 percent of the quality of the trade you know like the a right idea with a bad execution generally ends up poorly because you you can't sort of like stick with the position you know if you if you buy and 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 you pay the highs then it's it's generally quite frustrating and most people will just end up like, cutting their losses or or getting out of the position too quickly so some final words i think they are important uh, in the in, in the wider context first this is not a miracle solution i wish it was but it isn't so we discuss that some dislocation can be very well explained and understood and you know stocks trading both on the spot level and the volatility level requires a very strong understanding of what happening um, second, it reinforces the need to be highly specialized. You know, you should focus on a few names that you understand and you know well, and you should stick with them. If you watch implied vol and spot in those names every single day, you will get familiar with the behavior and you will understand when things are happening. And so you will see that, for example, every day at 10 a.m., you will see that volatility is coming off in that specific stock. That may give you uh, an edge whenever you want to execute your entry position into that stock by buying calls, for example, or by buying puts. This approach can give to can give strong intraday confirmation signals for short-term traders and also help long-term traders get into position. It will be particularly interesting to observe during periods of high volatility in option activity. So the more the more you provoke dislocations, the better it is because, you know, when you have huge movements, huge liquidation phase after earnings on big news, you will find that people will stop being rational and they will just come in and they will just buy puts at whatever the price. And, and that will show you sort of like dislocation happening that will give you an edge and you will be able to sort of like explain what's happening and understand things a bit better. So looking for, you know, high periods of activity to, to choose the strategy is generally quite interesting as well, especially, you know, when you have big movements in spot and volatility.
And finally, you know, disclaimer, obviously, you know, it's meant for purely for educational purposes, you know, and, and so um, please do not trade just on the back of this strategy, but, you know, you need to educate yourself, get more familiar with it and understand a bit better. If you're interested in getting a free trial, please uh, check the link in the description. We have a uh, zero commitment uh, free trial, so please uh, make sure you check it out. If you have any questions, you know, we do offer one-on-one -on -one training sessions. So if you have any questions, send us an email and we will be more than happy to help you um, getting started with the platform. If you want to discover any of the other other tools that we offer feel free to leave a comment leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel we'll have more content coming soon thank you very much for the support and have a very good day bye bye